Hey, Sam and friends. Welcome to the Joy Stamp with Rachel. I'm Rachel Kuhn and it's Wonderful Wednesday. Today I'll be sharing with you my paper pumpkin bonus card using the Spooky Treats stamp set. This um, kit is actually a treat holder kit and so it's kind of fun to see a card made instead of the treats. Go ahead and hold I flip and we'll get started. All right, let me get everything shimmied into view a little bit better. Of course, because it is Wonderful Wednesday, when you order from me today, I will send you the adhesive back sequins and gems. These are amazing. Let me show you a little closer. So these ones are the sequins and that light, light purple, purple. And then we have more of that teal color here and that's also sequins. And then look at these gems, which are these really fun, kind of like a TP shape almost. I don't even know what shape that would be called, but they're really cool looking rhinestones there or gems. Um, but those will be yours. That fits nicely into a little envelope. So I'll send that with, to you and with a thank you card after you order from me. Just don't forget the September hostess code. And that way I can find your order and you'll get a little even bonus when you order it with that code this month. All right, let me go ahead and show you the paper pumpkin kit. So I want to show you what it came with, what I made with it, and what I am going to show you, you the bonus card today. So let me open it up. I love first, this box is just adorable. I love that Stampin' has been changing up the boxes. Usually they have the traditional kind of like a bright orangey color um, of a box, but I love that this one is more festive. And I love that we also have on the side here, so it says Spooky Treat September 2022. So you know when this kit in this box came out. All right, let's go ahead and open it up. Inside we will see our instructions, which we're gonna, look at the back in just a minute but inside the kit I was able to make these treat boxes so these are Halloween ones that are really cute and they slide open and close we have our cute little spider guy we have this adorable ghost enjoy these this spooky treat it has candy inside uh, I love that this matches the box as well the paper pumpkin box and then this cute batty one, trick or treat, with some stars and some of that designer series paper right behind here. When I prepare a kit, I always go ahead and I stamp all that I want to have stamped as soon as I get it. And so all I had to do now is just assemble the rest. This one comes with, I believe, oh my goodness, I think it was 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 times 3. Um, yeah, 18 of these cute little treat boxes. So I'm excited to make these for the ladies at work and hopefully they enjoy them as much as I have enjoyed making them. Super cute kit. So it comes with stamp set and ink. So we're gonna use the stamps to make our card today. Let me show you the stamp set. So this one we actually don't use a whole lot when we are making those kits, just the sayings and a little bit of the, of the bats. And so for this card today, I wanted to use a lot of the stamps because we didn't use it for the kit. So this is what we'll end up doing, but let me show you. So here are the instructions. They are amazing. They've come a long way over the years as far as having color to them. I love that they have a ruler right here for measurements if you need to make any. And then it has step-by-step -step images and not words. And then there's also a video you can watch to help you make the actual kit. And in fact, when you use this QR code, right here and scan that. I'll take you directly to the video to show you how to assemble those boxes. So I will not do that today, but I do wanna show you this cute little section here. So if you like to go rogue and have more ideas than what was made with just the kit, you could totally follow some of these examples. So it looks like it has like a little card here, another little treat holder there, and then this card here. And this is what inspired me to make our card today. Let me show you. And there we go, our cute little ghost. It's a little bit different. I did change it up just a little bit, but that same layout, that same basic idea came from this guy right here. So make sure you guys look at the back of your instructions when you get your Stampin' Up! kits, your paper pumpkin kits, and they'll give you extra ideas. All right, so let me get the pieces out for this kit. And um, of course, I will have all this over my blog, so that will be in the description below or in the comments below, depending if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook. 
All right, so I'm using the Orchid Oasis as my card base today. That was one of the color inks that came with the kit, so I wanted to make sure I had that in there as well. And then I have a ba basic, basic black. You put basic and black together and you come a basic. <laughs> but basic black is my mat, which I really like to add mats to things. The card from the um, back of the instructions did not have a mat, but I. I honestly just love mats, so I add them, that little extra layer. And then we have this Fresh Freesia as our color to that that we'll stamp on. We will need this piece here and a scrap of basic white to stamp on. And I'm actually gonna grab my foam mat in here to have that. And we're gonna put this little grid sheet over it so that way if I make any messes, it doesn't get on my work surface. All right, so what we need to do first is create that really cool ghosty background with some blending brushes. I have three of my blending brushes right here and I'm going to use um, these two first with the Mango Melody and the Orchid Oasis. Let me open those up and we're just going to spot color on this. I know it sounds kind of crazy. Here's my Mango Melody. Let me get it in this view for you guys to so see how this works. And let's get also at the same time our Oak Orchid Oasis. It doesn't matter which color you start with. Just do one at a time though. And you can always fill in more as needed. So here's my blending brush. I'm going to dab it in here. A couple taps. And then I don't want it to be as bright. So I'm going to do a tap off onto my scrap paper. I just make circular motions wherever you want a little bit of that yellow. We're just creating an awesome background here. And I love that we're coloring on actual colored cardstock. Usually I'll use this, this method to make a background on basic white. So it shows up really well, but I like that it's a little bit more blended into the color and a little bit more subtle. Again, just do a little spots here and there to give that color variation. All right, let's go ahead and grab our Orchid Oasis. Again, same thing. This is a darker one, so you want to make sure you dab this one off pretty well. And then do some circular motions here. You can have darker spots if you want. Or keep it fairly light. Again, I probably don't even need to ink it up, but again, we'll do a little bit more purple up here. And I'm really loving the way that's turning out now. Okay. Now we have our background piece. Let me go ahead and put our Mango Melody away. And I'm gonna grab our basic white out real quick. Sorry, not our basic white. Our, my basic white piece of paper. Okay, there it is. And our saying. We just want the spooky from this guy here. It says, enjoy the spooky treat. But we only want spooky. No enjoy this and no treat. <laughs> so we're gonna ink it up. And then we're gonna come over here and just stamp it on our basic white. And then later we will fussy cut that out. Looks pretty good. Okay, set that aside. Then we can put our Orchid Oasis ink away. Now we can grab our Whisper White or our Basic White. I think they never changed it. If I look in the catalog, I bet you anything it still calls this a Whisper White. Um, and so whatever you want to call it, it's a white ink pad. But we're grabbing our cute little ghost here, which he is just the cutest friendly ghost. You see his little cheeks to make him a happy ghost, so he's not scary. And we're gonna ink him up. I'm gonna go around a couple times. White ink is a lot different than a regular ink. It's a little bit more sticky, it takes a longer time to dry. And I'm gonna just stamp our little ghost all over the place here at different heights. I'm not gonna have him flip upside down though. We don't want any crazy flying ghosts but have them all over. I do like how a peekaboo one going that direction. So you just see his cute little head and then another one down here below. It's looking pretty good. Let me get another little peekaboo ghost there. What do we think? How's that look? Is it random enough? Some of it we will cover, so it'll be fine, but it is super, super cute. I'm loving that. Then now very carefully with your white blending brush, Take this and we're going to just tap a little bit of ink and we're gonna make our ghost a little bit more spooky by coloring in the inside here. So just lightly, there we go. 
kind of like a flick up. I'm trying to avoid the face because I don't want to smear his face. And I don't want um, the white that I'm putting on right now to be too overbearing. So there we go. I'm just coloring in our little ghost. Let me get closer so you can kind of see the difference from one to the next. Here's a colored ghost and here is a not colored ghost. You could totally leave it this way and have that colors that we blended on already shine through more so. But I kind of like this spookiness that this just adding a little bit of white to it does. Again, I'm avoiding the face completely because I don't want to, to rub that face out and smear it. A little bit on that guy. And I think that's all of our ghosts colored in. Super, super easy and really cute. All right. The rest is now just doing a little bit of assembling and our fussy cutting. We'll grab our spooky right here and my paper snips. And we'll cut this out. If you want to do a first cut and then come back around it, you can. So it's easier to use. But if you want to do a one-time cut only, you just need to take it a little bit slower. So I'm going to just cut off this excess. And then when I like to fussy cut, I like to usually have it be bubbled. So a kind of a circle look to it instead of like a straight edge. So just go around your letters, moving the paper and not so much the scissors. To get just the spooky out. There we go. I'll turn it this way. And it's good that we did our ghosts first. It gives them a chance to dry a little bit more. Like I said that white is just a little bit more sticky than our regular water-based inks. Cute. And then we have our little spooky. Alright, let's go ahead and now add this to our mat and then we can do all of our layering. So I'm using our liquid glue, just a little bit on the outside. I usually do like a line through. You could even do an X if you want to make sure it's glued well on all the sides. Give yourself a little bit of a perimeter. If you want to get closer in, I, I had that go out pretty far. So this one looks like a better example of how I like to glue. Just make sure that it's sticking to our mat here. I do like liquid glue because look, I totally moved that and I need to move it back. So it gives me a little bit of wiggle time before it dries. That looks better. Now what we need to do with all of our little scraps here, I have my glimmer paper, my basic back black, and my fresh freesia. And I'm gonna take one in and I'm just do a tear. You could do an up tear or a down tear, it doesn't matter. Just a little piece that we're tearing off to give that kind of rough edge to it. Same with this one. Looks like I started going down and then I finished up. This one's the hardest one to tear because it is a thicker piece of paper. And so, oh, I lied, look at that, that was really easy. <laughs> there we go. So that, I love that. So it's white on one side and it has that glimmer on the other. So it's kind of like a dual sided piece there. All right, go ahead and add our basic black first and this one I lined up flesh to that mat so that way it kind of looks like it's continuing over and I'm going about halfway in the middle here for our piece and you see how I lined it up so it goes right there for this guy though I'm going to have it go past the mat so I'm gonna have it go on top of our basic black and pass the mat here. I do still want it to be a little bit longer on this edge. There we go. And then lastly, we have this cute guy here. And he's gonna be the one that's coming a little bit more forward. Right there. If you don't have this type of paper, I've seen really cute cards using our washi tape and that gives the same kind of layered look that I have here. Make sure I might add a little bit more glue on this one because that glimmer paper sometimes is hard to stick to. So let's let, give it its best sticking chance. There we go. Turn over your spooky. Grab the mini dimensionals that came in your kit and add it to the thickest part of it. So I have the S is pretty thick still 
and my Y. If it was too thin, like I cut it way too small, then I would just cut those dimensionals in half. We just don't want them to show through. And place your spooky right there. Oh, it's looking cute. Okay, lastly, we just need to do a couple more things. I have some baker's twine that I've divided, so it's a little bit stringy. And I'm going to wrap this around and tie a big bow. I had about 24 inches, I think is what I measured for this one. But it just depends on how big you want your, your bow to be. Oh, I forgot a step. Let me go back. Let me grab it. So I'm looking at this one and I realize what I missed. Can you guys see it? You spot it? It's the stars. I think we might be able to totally redeem ourselves. Give me, give me a chance. So I have my Mango Melody, and I could put some stars still right here, I feel. But these stars I also wanted to stamp off once, as I don't want them to overcome our ghost and be the main feature, but more just like a supporting background. So there's some stars right there. Stamp it. Ideally, this would have been better if I'd done it before I glued everything on. But look, I think we're going to make it work. There we go. Not too bad. Totally, totally fixed it. Good catch though. That almost could have been bad. All right, let's go ahead and now wrap that baker's twine around it and make our bow. Do a redo moment. And I want my bow to be just above my glimmer paper here. So get your knot to hang out right above it. And you can move this afterwards, so if it's not there right now, you can. it's just easier to get it in place from the get-go, though. Oh, and look how easy that huge bow was to make. It's supposed to be floppy. It's supposed to be crazy, so that is perfect. Let's grab our card base in and get our liquid glue. This one, make sure you put liquid glue close to this edge here. So that one, this is going to make it raise a little bit, which make it harder for it to adhere. So just make sure we have some supporting glue on both sides of that baker's twine. Get closer so you can see. It's hard to see the black and black, but it's there. So I went between the two of them. And let's go ahead and add this to our card base. Just like that. Uh, there we go. We shimmied it over. And we have our crazy looking bow. And lastly, they gave these really, really fun black stars that have adhesives on the back. So we're gonna just add a large star right about here. And then we have these smaller ones. So we'll have that one coming at an angle below it and then one more star up here. I grab my bone folder and this card will be done. Oh, you see right there, I might have to put a weight on this because it's not sticking as well. If I'm really worried about that, what I would do is add some like tear tape underneath there and give it some super duper sticky power. You pick, fix that twine. Oh my goodness. Look how adorable that is. Spooky, mm, spooky cute, right? Super fun. We'll get those both back in there so you can kind of see how they turned out. All right, you guys, I hope you've had a fun time learning how to make this bonus card or alternative card inspired by the back of the directions. I hope you guys give it a chance and use these, this stamp set even more after you're done making your kit. I can't stress that enough. The value of Paper Pumpkin comes with not the actual kit itself, but the stamp set that you can continue using over and over again for all of your projects for Halloween. All right, you guys, have a great Wednesday. Happy stamping, everyone. Goodbye.